If you had to introduce your sister to the world, what would you say? I would say that she's my best friend. And she's the greatest person and the happiest person you will ever meet. Right? Mm, yeah. You say hi. Welcome to SBSK. Join me as I travel around the world and interview individuals living with a condition to prove no matter how you communicate or what obstacles you face, you're always deserving of love and acceptance. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. How does your sister communicate? She communicates a lot by making noises, pointing. Um, she's really independent, so she will grab things on her own if she wants to. But she does communicate with an iPad at school. I know, you're saying hello. She will use an iPad at school, and she uses it during her therapy sessions. And there's an app on there that she uses to communicate. And she's pretty good at it. What do you like to eat? I like to eat cookies. Ooh, I like cookies too. What do you like to drink? to drink milk. What's your favorite TV show? Dragon Tales. Is that a good one? What's your favorite song? My favorite song is If You're Happy and You Know It. She likes to talk about herself. It's Chris. I know. Say hi. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah, say hi. That's a nice wave. What's your biggest hope for how others treat your sister? I know, hi, quiet hands. There we go. Um, I really hope that people just treat her with respect. That's one big thing. I always say that if people can't accept April, then they can't accept me. She's a big part of my life, and you know, everyone just has to love her as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how would you describe your daughter to the world? I would say that um, she's very, very happy. She's nonverbal. She's very, very easygoing. It's someone that you'd want to be friends with. Mom's upstairs. If someone wants to be April's friend, how do they start? They have to start by waving and saying hello. And usually, I know it's Mr. Chris. Say hi. See, that's an, that's that's it. And just a smile, and you're like set to go. Who's your favorite person? Do you love mommy? I know. I'm the go-to person for music, right? Right? Two, two. I know. We're not going to sing right now, but maybe in a little bit, okay? You know, that's Peppa. It's Peppa. Are you two able to have conversations? Yes, we, we like books and music. So we engage in those two um, likes. Uh, 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 uh. Right? I know. And lots of, we, we do lots of music because I'm usually the one who sings, you know, to her through the day, right? Because it brings her so much joy and that's how she communicates. Basically, I know what she needs and, uh, and she knows that I know that. So she'll go take the easy route and just point to things. I should be making her use her um, communication device more than she's using it. But she, um, she tries to get away with uh, pointing to things. And um, when we make her use it, she associates it with school or therapy. And uh, you can see that she's a little annoyed by it. Is it OK if I ask you a question? We're going to sit right here. I know you want to get up two minutes, okay? You're doing really well. I know. Yeah. I know. It's hard for you to sit still. Daddy, I know. Oh, April calls my name. She'll point to me. She'll, she'll always point to me and say, uh, say my name. Oh, the name she has for me. And, What's that? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm not quite sure. It's, it's either Anna, Nana. <laughs> something but um it's not daddy but it's uh, it's it's something else and she'll she'll say my name all the time and point to me
So April has rubenstein tabey syndrome, which is a rare genetic syndrome. Um, it occurs in about one in 125,000 people. And I always say that April happened to be that one. Is it any specific chromosome affected or? Yes, it's chromosome 16. That there's a, there's a deletion or tear with chromosome 16. I know, I know. You're doing so well. I wish you knew. Hi. I wish you knew what she thought about, like, I don't know what she dreams about. That's a huge one. What does she dream about at night? You know, does she have nightmares? Does she not? What, like, you know, what's going on in her dreams? Are we in them? Is she talking? Is it just, you know, is she with friends? Is she with family? Is she swimming? Is she... I just, there, there's just so much that I want to know. And I know that one day I will. We're going to work on it. Mm. It's crazy. I know. Rachel, you know, was, was three when, when I had April, and I think she understood at a very early age, you know, that, she, that April was, was different. From the time that I was a little girl, I always used to ask my parents, why doesn't she speak? Why? You know, it, it never made sense as to why everybody else's siblings could speak, mine couldn't. And my quest with speech therapy is to figure that out. I Thanks noticed you always take the time to respond to your sister. Why is it so important for you to validate what she's saying? Just so that she knows that I'm listening and that this is a conversation. That's something we learn from a speech perspective. Always do turn taking. Always give them a chance to respond. Mm -hmm. um, and always talk to them as if you're having a conversation, even if it's really just sounds coming out. That way you set the foundation for a possible conversation in the future. Do you see your sister there? She loves you a lot. Do you want your sister to come and help you? Do you love your sister? You can come on out, yeah, she's pointing for you. Can you explain to everyone what this device is and how it benefits April? Sure, so April speaks with an iPad and the app is called Prolo Quota Go. And this app is filled with lots of, you want, you want your page? Um, the app is filled with a lot of icons that she's familiarized with and that she's able to navigate and speak. And so there's a page all about her. There's a, there's a page for school. There's a page for all of like um, her favorite foods, her favorite music. That's why I definitely went into speech, um, is to one day have a, you know, a, that full conversation with her, and we're getting there slowly but surely, but we're definitely making progress. But it's that turn-taking that's so important, and she needs to know that we are having a conversation, even though it's, it's short and simple. But you gonna fall asleep? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you're rocking yourself. Mm -hmm. I know, you wanna sit on that couch, I know. I know you want your iPad. I know. I know. In a few minutes, okay? In a few minutes. You know, I'm the one who is the mush. Um, so I give her, I give in to her for like all the things that she basically shouldn't be having, like an iPad all the time um, or, you know, that third Oreo that she shouldn't be having. Right? You know, it's tough because you look at her through the eyes of a child, but yet she is 18. So I do tend to have to remind myself of her age mm -hmm. and that it's it's typical that she wants to be, you know, in her room alone with an iPad and to be left alone. Um, and so I find it, it's mm -hmm. it's hard at first because I'm a parent and yet I look at her as a, as a, as a youngster, but... In reality, she's older, and I have to kind of remind myself to say, it's okay, I have to back away. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if this is what her interest is, then go for it. You're like stimming yourself to sleep. <laughs> I know. What's stimming? Uh, stimming is just these, I know, say hi. These, um, you know, the repetitive behaviors that calm her. So for her, it's, it's rocking. It's rocking. And usually she can fall asleep to it. She'll do it in the car a lot. Or she'll just do it sitting. Right? April. You gonna open your eyes for me? Sometimes she'll do it during therapy. Um, right, April? Yes, yeah, stop rocking your head. Leave your head forward. I know you want to sit on that couch. A few minutes, okay?
Mm-hmm. You're doing so well. Is that couch her couch? That's her couch. If, if she's not in her room, she's on the couch. Loves that couch. It's just super comfy. Have you grown accustomed to hearing Christmas music throughout the year? <laughs> yes. And, you know, um, I don't even hear it anymore. If you just didn't say that, I wouldn't have even... It would have gone right by me. It would have gone right over my head. I wouldn't even listen. But, yes, we listen to a lot of Christmas music. A lot of Barney in different languages. I'm just excited for the future, what, what holds for us. I'm excited where it takes us. We'll always be really close. Mm. Yeah, it's Chris. I'm the first one to say to Rachel, live your life, go, do, enjoy. Um, I don't want you to feel that you're kind of 100% um, responsible, but in the back of my mind, I do know that she will be the one who will look, for, look out for her to, um, to help with whatever April needs. Does it bring you comfort to see the bond your two daughters have? Oh, it's amazing. It's, uh, I know that Rachel will, uh, will be there for her. We know that. It's not even, uh, it's not even a question. That's, you know, that's understood. My parents and I had to sign legal documents to become her primary and supporting legal guardians, which is a lot. You know, I was, I was 19 at the time when we were deciding this, and that was definitely a lot, but there was not a doubt in my mind that I was going to do it. I knew right away that I was going to take care of her um, and have her as my responsibility. She's my sister. Family is family. I think the older we get, the closer we become. Oh, I know it's Chris. And I think that's because I just understand her more and more each day. Hi. Hi. That was a nice hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Daddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, we've really become close. You know, even now, just like her holding my hand, like that never really happens. And her letting, like, her letting me hold her hand, um, usually she pulls away. So the fact that, like, she's sitting here and letting me hold her hand, I think that just really shows how mm. strong. I know it's Chris. How strong the bond has become. Mm. I know it's Chris. Would you mind demonstrating how you communicate through this? Sure, absolutely. Miss April. Miss mm. April. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this, okay? When is your birthday? My birthday is April 9th. Awesome. And um, what is your favorite book? Really love. My favorite book is Peppa Pig. Oh, okay. Look, we have Peppa right here. Want to see? See? Um. My favorite song is If You're Happy and You Know It. I know, you love that song. My favorite song is If You're Happy and You Know It. What, do you want to sing right now? You start it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. April has completely shaped who I am as a person. And I think that if she wasn't who she is, I would be a different person. She has taught me so much about other people, about myself, about the special needs community. Um, she shaped my career for me. I know I'm holding your hand. You wanna sing? Is it okay if we sing? Okay, ready? Oh, we are flying in an airplane, looking out the window. Watching the clouds go by. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! hooray! Yay! Thanks for watching. If you appreciate what we're doing and want to see SBSK grow, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This will help us reach even more people and make the world a better place. Thank you. What does it mean to you that April lets you hold her hand? It means everything. It, it, it really just means that I know that she loves me. Even though she can't verbalize it, it, it means that she does. And that's huge. Right? Mm-hmm. I know you're saying hi. <laughs>